There's no shortage of theological hot takes on TikTok. You know that for sure if you've been following this channel for a while. Today, I want to respond to another such hot take, and we're going to find out if it's hot fire or hot garbage. Okay, this used to be one of my most favorite worship songs. Our words can bring life or death. Love this song. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Would you ever look at someone and go, you're not enough? You just aren't enough. We would never say that to somebody. So why are we saying that about ourselves? Oh, interesting question. Okay, so we never go up to somebody and say, you're not enough. And so why do we say that about ourselves? The song says, I'm not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here again? And to me, I'm like, well, have you read the Bible? That's my first question. Because if we want to look in the scriptures, it's very clear and evident that we are not enough from a moral standpoint. Think about all the verses that talk about our sin and falling short. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We're dead in our trespasses and sins by nature, children of wrath. All sorts of verses that talk about our weakness and inadequacy. And that's precisely why we need Jesus. Because in that respect, we are not enough. We need Jesus. We need someone else because we're not enough to earn God's favor, to earn salvation. So that's point number one. Point number two is that when people talk about being enough, they're often talking about it within the context of like from a personhood standpoint. Are you enough as a person, like a dignity and self-esteem and all these kind of things tied up into one? And people say, well, you know, if you don't think you're enough, then you're just going to kind of wallow in insecurity and, and all that kind of thing. So I'm like, okay, well, you know what the solution to that is? Two things, right? Number one, it's understanding that we were created in the image of God. That gives us intrinsic dignity, worth. Second thing is that through Christ, we are made enough. Through Jesus' imputed righteousness on our behalf, he has empowered us through his Holy Spirit that we can walk in godliness and that we can walk in the purposes that he has for us. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says this, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. We can have a proper self-confidence, not because of something within us, but because of what is in Christ and who Christ is and what he has done. You're singing worship. And it's, I'm not enough. Not only am I not enough, but meet me here again. It's the tone of, I'm so unworthy that I have to ask you to meet me here. God. I think that's an aspect of worship, though. I think that's a huge aspect of worship is recognizing our state before God. It's this, okay, wow, on my own. Man, I would be, you know, deserving of your wrath and your judgment, but praise be to God for your son, Jesus, that graciously gave himself on my behalf, that I can rejoice in the Lord, that my joy can be made complete in Christ. Like all of these amazing things that flow from worship. It's like, why would we be worshiping God if we are enough in and of ourselves? Like if I'm good, right? Like, oh no, man, why would I even need God? Why would I worship a being other than myself? Because I'm good. In you, whatever. And it also sounds really sexual. I'm not enough unless you come. Well, this confuses me about progressive Christians. Or I should just put, no, progressive Christians. It confuses me why they always kind of try to make like some like big like hot take and maybe she doesn't identify as a Christian. I'm not even sure. Maybe she's an evangelical. Um, but but like they often try to go in the space of like kind of correcting the scripture and say, no, this is kind of what Jesus would really want us have us believe. And then they usually go into like some weird territory of like hyper sexualized like language or like. I like swearing and just I, just weird stuff. I just don't get it. Honestly, it kind of takes away their credibility. Like if they're trying to get people to watch this like me, maybe they don't even care. But I'm like, you know, if they're trying to convince me that the way I'm reading the Bible is wrong or what I believe about Christ is wrong. Why would they just go into something that immediately is just like sick and twisted and weird? I and, like, is that going to convince me? I'm not sure. Our words can bring life, love, joy, and Absolutely. peace to those around us. Yeah. 
Including ourselves. Right. Pay attention to what you're saying. Here's why I think what she's proposing is so damaging. Think about somebody that's struggling with self-hate. Like I've struggled with self-hate for a, a long time and more over the last few years really began to get healing from it. But she would propose that you just go up to these people and say, you're enough, you know, you're a good person, you know, you got this, all that kind of thing, right? And maybe a person will buy into that and they'll believe it and they'll just you know, kind of go, yeah, okay, you know what? I'm going to stop hating myself. I'm a good person. I'm enough, all this kind of thing. For me, you tell me that, it, it doesn't it doesn't align with what's actually going on inside of me because I recognize that there is sin and there is brokenness going on inside of me. And so it's not just like, oh, you're good, you're enough, that kind of thing. No, I need to actually look to Christ. What does Christ say about me? He says that I'm created in his image, that through Jesus' sacrifice, I've been made his child, that I shouldn't hate myself because that's actually murder in my heart. And that's against God's law. And I love God. And why would I want to go against what he commanded? If I want to find true security, true confidence in who I am, I need to look to the creator and who made me and who actually says through me, you can pursue the purposes that I have for you in me. My grace is sufficient for you. My like that is so much more helpful, healing, beneficial than just saying, Oh, uh, you know what? You're enough on your own because it's not true. What I've realized is that Satan tries to do two things to us is that he tries to convince us that we are enough without Christ and not enough with him. And look, it's an important truth to remember that maybe when we're doubting our salvation and we feel like we need to go in the space of trying to earn God's love or show God that, no, we're a really good person, we need to say, Christ is enough for me. His sacrifice is enough. It's not about me being that good person or being enough within myself. It's about me like receiving this grace that God has for me in humility. That's it. That is so freeing and it invites us into so much rest. And that rest is what, exactly what I want to invite each one of you to step into today. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like down below and subscribe because I'm putting out new videos all the time. This content is only possible because of the people on Patreon that support me on a monthly basis. If you want to help support my mission of helping people follow Jesus daily, head to the link in my bio and sign up today. I'll see you next time. God bless.